Hello again, YouTube, Chrissy here, and I hope that your autumnal season is going beautifully so far. So today I am sharing three kid-friendly or beginner-friendly autumn handicraft projects using a very popular and one of my favorite materials in Waldorf education, wool. And in three popular techniques, needle felting, stitching, and beginner knitting. My Bella, who is six years old, and I needle felted two sweet little pumpkins for our nature table display. For this project, we used our dandy little needle felting kit, which includes finger guards, and these are important, especially when working with small children. Of course, needle felting needles and a foam pad. We typically use white as our base, and then here is Bella. Uh, choosing which colors she would like to work with today and I'll leave links to all of our materials listed down below in the description box. So again beginning with the white as our base you want to gently separate or pan out your wool to where there aren't any big chunks and as you can see we're using about a palm sized amount of wool for a small sized pumpkin. I then split that palm size amount of wool in half to work in layers. So I roll the white wool into a more tightly than loose ball shape and a needle poke around it just randomly and this is just to hold the general shape in place. Then going in with the second layer, same process, roll it and um, a few pokes turning it on all sides to secure it i know it seems like i'm doing all of the work but i do like to get the base done for bella and then it's easier for her to get her hands in there a tip that helps with uh, forming the shape is to warm up your hands and then um, do like a rolling uh, type motion and rolling your wool into a ball. So now we begin adding the layers of color. Again, gently fanning out your wool, the same rolling or wrapping technique, and needle poking. I find it easiest to work in small amounts and layering at a time. At least it's easiest for us beginners this way. Every time I do add a new layer, I secure it with several pokes before handing it back to Bella. I do want to get through a quick disclaimer in saying that Bella is responsible, patient, and responds well to direction, which is why I trust that she is safe in this work at just the age of six. Of course, you know your child best, so please take your child's maturity into consideration. A poke from this needle is very painful and can be dangerous. Bella also understands that she is not to reach for these materials without my supervision. So you can see we go back and forth with layering and between the needle a felting technique and using the warmth of our hands until we are happy with our shape. To give it more of a pumpkin-like, less than a ball appearance, you do want to add lines or grooves. Uh, and to do this, I used a twig or a pencil as a guide, giving it a few pokes to mark the line, then needle felting a contrasting color of wool uh, in that groove.
continue that all around the pumpkin, trying to keep each uh, groove or shape symmetrical as symmetrical as you can until you're happy with your pumpkin shape. For the stem, for this particular pumpkin, we chose to go with a short, stumpy type of stem. So I'm using a um, felt sheet of wool and I'm going to give it a few pokes to kind of keep it in place. And then I'm going to wrap it with the wool roving and then needle felt that right on top of our pumpkin. So before I actually secure it onto the pumpkin, as you can see, I do give it a few pokes to hold the roving in place. And since it's so small, I did find that using a twig uh, was helping, although my foam pad was shifting a bit. So this can get a little tricky and I recommend an adult working with smaller pieces. For our second pumpkin, we did want a long curved like stem. So in order to achieve that, we skipped out on the piece of felt and used only the wool roving. The next project is a lot simpler. We made felted acorns. However, I did take a shortcut and sometimes that's just necessary and this time time actually won it's a lot more valuable to me but you can definitely uh, make these felted balls yourself using a wet felting technique but i bought mine 100 wool felt balls already made into a, a ball shape on amazon and this is the brand i'll also have it linked down below and this is 30 pieces and i think i paid about five dollars You'll also need your choice of adhesive. We went with a hot glue gun. And the best part of this project is going on a nature walk and collecting acorn caps with your littles. This is our favorite fall activity. Um, and again, just encouraging you to go outdoors and find treasures. So the rest of the process is pretty self-explanatory. Dab. Uh, some of your adhesive and then uh, secure and hold the felted ball into place for a few seconds and you've got yourself a sweet little acorn. Bella thinks that working with a hot glue gun is super awesome and very adult so we do alternate on using the hot glue gun and who is securing the felt balls into the acorn cap. We are getting a lot of use out of these felted acorns. So first we're using it with our math activities as math manipulatives. Um, we can also use them to mark the dates on our perpetual calendar. Baby sister is using them as a color matching activity as we're making at least a pair of each color, if not more. And then of course in imaginative play, uh, these will go great with our acorn family peg dolls. And the last project I have to share with you today are dragon puppets for play and or storytelling. This involves several techniques, one which is knitting. And knitting is a common handicraft lesson for Waldorf first grade. Uh, so you will need plenty of these snake bodies which you can make using a knitting tower or a two finger knitting technique. And of course, you'll need plenty of yarn, preferably wool yarn as it does withstand best to time and play. So I'm going to link a tutorial on how to uh, two finger knit down below in the description box.
So this also involves stitching and for this you're going to need wool felt and a pattern for a dragon head and dragon tail. I just freehanded it and I just used construction paper for that pattern. So here you can see I have two pieces for the head and two pieces of felt for the tail. And then tiny little scrap pieces uh, of felt for the spikes and ears on the dragon. You'll also need a thread. I like to use cotton embroidery thread, twine if you do want to make a marionette, wooden dowels, and buttons for the eyes. General supplies like fabric scissors and paper scissors for your pattern, and push pins also help to keep your felt pieces in place. Then you're going to stitch together your two head pieces and your two tail pieces. For the head, you do want to make sure that you are stitching in the felt pieces of spikes along the way. Then it's all about assembling. So you want to take your snake body and using something thin like your wooden dowel or a pencil, you wanna go ahead and push that into the head part and the tail part. Um, at this point, you can also secure it by sewing it or adding a dab of adhesive. I didn't find that um, step necessary. And the final step is to add your two pieces of dowels or sticks, one to each end, and you've got yourself a moving puppet. To make the marionette style puppet, I secured two wooden dowels into a lowercase t with a dab of hot glue and secured it again with twine. I ran a piece of thread through the head of the dragon and secured it to my tee, the same for the tail. I hope that today's video inspired you to create something alongside your littles. Please know that your projects don't need to be perfect, nor do you need to be proficient in any of these skills. I am far from it. Our children don't need perfect parents anyway. They do need our time and love. Thanks again for watching.